I'm Mel Stewart, and this is the Swim Swam Podcast. Joining me today, we have a very, very, very dear friend, a fellow USA national team member, teammate, Pan American Games gold medalist, current head coach of Ben Swim Club. She's on the ASCA Board of Directors, Swim Outlet Coaches Advisory Panel, and she's on the advisory board for Triton Wear. Today, we have Megan Esting. Hi, Mel. Nice to be here. I'm doing really well. I'm doing really well. And I love this topic and I'm excited to talk to you about it. I have, I'm, I personally, I feel a little bit of shame because I should know this about you. I did not know that you have, um, an undergraduate degree in math and computer science. I was like, what? I didn't know that. Yeah. So when I was looking at the majors, like freshman year orientation, I was looking at engineering because you're supposed to be an engineer or, um, I don't know, like teaching or, or what have you. And I said, Every time I looked at the class list, I was like, well, I really I'm, I'm, think those math classes look super cool, but I'm not super interested in anything else. And after 20 minutes of this, my counselor was like, well, you, know, you can major in math. I'm like, oh, <laughs> well, that'd be great. Thank you. Let's do that. And then the computer science just kind of went with it. And like language has always been really interesting to, to me. So like linguistics and computer science and programming was just linguistics of math in the, the way that I already thought about things like code can be elegant, language can be elegant, communication can be elegant, or it can be boxy and stuttered and whatever. You might get the same stuff across, but it's it's not smooth. And so there's kind of an art form in there. And it's kind of like coaching. And you also have, well, I love that. You also have a master's degree in psychometrics. Yeah, so explain, so yeah, yeah, give it, give us the the first grade <laughs> explanation of psychometrics because so it's um, defining. I'm, a, I'm a asking. For, I'm asking for a friend. I'm asking for a friend. Yeah, right. So when we define like if you're what it, what is good at math, what is good at reading, and we do this for for not only kids going through school but all sorts of things that we want to define progress in, and so you define what that is, and then you measure the components of that, and then you design curriculum that helps drive the components that's going to create success in the whole thing that you originally defined. So again, like that's what we do in coaching. We decide what a successful swimmer is and each coach kind of define that defines that for themselves. So if I think a successful swimmer is someone that has a beautiful stroke or has a beautiful relationship with the water or has a grit and endurance, um, you know, I can define that. And then I create my program around the components that I think are going to create what I define as a successful swimmer. And then you did develop a curriculum and drive the curriculum. And that's what that degree is. There you have it. And I'm, I'm, I wish we hadn't gotten too deep in the weeds because just, just <laughs> explaining your, 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 your credentials and your background, I think it's a little bit intimidating um, mm-hmm. because today we're talking about swim data. We're talking about empowering you as a coach and empowering your swimmers with swim data. And, um, this is sponsored by Triton Wear, and we're, you're on the advisory board. I'm on the advisory board. And um, just full disclosure, I'm on the advisory board literally for one reason. I'm on the advisory. I'm just, you know, I'm just to help in terms of like marketing and messaging, but it's, I wanted to just be a fly on the wall because I know I need to bone up. I need to be, I know that this is the future of our sport. And I know that it's, it is going to be a transformation that's happening now. We have early adopters. And I know that I think a lot of coaches are in my chair. They're intimidated by it. They're looking to people who have expertise. I think, I think a lot of coaches, not, not, I'm not going to say all coaches, but a lot of coaches learn peer to peer. A lot of coaches learn through conversations and saying, Hey, what have you done? Well, let me, let me try that one thing. So today we're sponsored by Triton Wear. If, if you're, if you're dropping in right now, guys, press pause, go to this URL, go to most swim tech m o s t swim tech.com forward slash dish discount forward slash gold metal mail most swim tech.com forward slash discount forward slash gold metal mail use the coupon code gold metal mail and get 15 percent off your entire order this expires on june 30th um megan i am i'm fully expecting you to explain why swim data matters 
and fully expecting you to, to break it down for someone who has an SEC education, who <laughs> has worked in sales their whole life and, and worked in, in, in just person to person. I have no expertise. All I'm saying, man, I have no expertise. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, when you go all the way back to it, when you, I want to get better at riding my bike, I want to get better at playing my banjo. Okay, great. What does better look like? Well, and you define that again, it, it looks like um, I can do things more smoothly or I, I can do things more efficiently. Great. So what are two things that represent that in our sport? Maybe distance per stroke is going to represent a lot of things. So if I just focus on increasing my distance per stroke, I'm very likely going to be more efficient. I'm very likely going to have more endurance because I'm using my energy more wisely. I'm probably going to be smoother. I mean, it, yes, you could take Triton wear to all sorts of cool and intricate places, just like, just like programming or, 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 or anything that has this much depth to it. This is an extremely powerful tool, but you can play with it too. And we've done a lot of playing and, and this is something like, okay, yes, I have those degrees, but I'm talking to 15 year olds. They don't have those degrees. They know they want to get better. And some of them are super good at painting and um, writing English essays and creative writing. And, but when we talk about swimming and we want to get better in the hundred fly and we see heroic people going underwater really fast, they say, how do I go underwater really fast? And we say, well, we can measure where you are now and we can set a goal for where you want to be. And we can talk about how to bridge the path from here to there. Bridging the path might be pushing off harder, which Triton more measures. It might be um, pushing off a little deeper, which Triton more measures. Uh, it might be staying there not as long as you normally do because maybe your speed drops so much during the time you're underwater. So that's a conversation I can have with a 15 year old. I can have that conversation with a 12 year old. Hey, there are things that you could do to get better at the thing you want to do. Let's get better at it. And the thing that I love about Triton is it tells, it tells you, you know, you're getting better. I feel like sometimes in swimming, we sort of wander around in the woods, hoping that we're getting better at something because I talked about it, but the kid, I don't know. We did a set the other day that when I was looking at the metrics, I didn't realize that that was our starting point. So it was good for me too. And it was good for them. And throughout the set, they got better. Their 1.2 turned to, I mean, just the metric we were doing, it turned to 1.3 to 1.4 and they knew it and I knew it. And we could ground ourselves in the fact that we got better over the last 20 minutes. And that's super encouraging. And it was super fun. So yeah, you don't, you don't have to nerd out. I'm going to, I'm going to address fear. I'm going to address the fear of coaches and, and, and put it in, in these terms. Um, I, th I think most coaches, you know, they're, they're, they'll interface in, ner in terms of news and information through Swim Swam. And uh, Swim Swam is really a, a, a tech company. You, you, you just you have, that's just the world we live in. Um, I, I had to be taught by someone how to email. I had to, be, you know, years ago when email started, I had to be taught every single technology step that someone takes. Uh, Zoom. I, I just, I'm, I'm old. And uh, this isn't intuitive for me. Uh, my first reaction for any kind of technology is, is really fear. And, and I push it away and I delay it and I delay it until I ha absolutely have to adopt it. Uh, I'm forced to. Um, uh, Braden Keith, our co-founder and editor-in-chief, is, is a guy who is, this is intuitive for him. He'll help me a little bit, but he fully expects me to learn how to fish rather than just be handed fish. And um and to the, so coaches out there, if you're listening, this is a pain point for me, this, this, and, and I think that for a lot of you, this might be a pain point, but, um, at the same time, this is what I understand about this technology. Uh, Tritonware does one thing. It forces you as, as, a, as a, as a, as a swimmer, as a coach to set an intention. It forces you to get focused. It focuses, it forces you the coach and the athlete to be present in every single moment in their training. And that's the difference between average and good, good and great, great and having a Pan American Games gold medal. It's, uh, it really is, it, it really matters. 
So off the bat, what tech you know, did you first adopt and why? So it was, it was the headsets. It was being able to communicate with the kids. Um, I felt as a young coach, um, often lonely on the pool deck. I felt like I could interact and contribute sometimes, but I felt like I wasn't able to communicate. I, I mean, as we all know, I have a lot to say <laughs> and I want to teach. I want to talk about it. I want to show you where the next thing is. And I feel like the sooner I can guide you to the thing, the next step along the bridge from where you are to where you want to be, I feel good about my contribution. And I felt like I wasn't able to connect and contribute in the way that I wanted to. So I was at a national team alumni reunion at Olympic trials, which Mel hosts. And I was sitting next to Gary Hall senior who is an icon in the sport. And he is an incredibly intelligent person. And he was sharing with me what he did at the race club and all the toys that he uses. And there's a pressure meter, which is so cool. And um, the, the, there's all the, there's, there's um, a velocity meter and all super cool stuff. And then he, he kind of glossed over. He said, also, I have the kids wear the headset. And so I can talk to them while they're swimming. And then he kept going into some of the, the, the data stuff. Um, and I said, uh, can you back up for a second? <laughs> you talk to them while they're swimming. And it, as he described that, um, all the experiences from my past just kind of came flooding in. So I think we've talked before my, my daughter was born deaf and she has a cochlear implant. And when we were at the Maryland school for the deaf growing up, there was a lot of conversation on communication, access and learning. And when, when access is not during the event, during the conversation on content, um, the, the depth isn't there. And it's really hard to go from the concrete to the abstract. And that's something that is a giant theme in literacy for young deaf people, because reading and writing is, is based on auditory information. And so the access without the depth intermittently and not real time, it, it's hard to leave the concrete. And I'm asking my, my athletes to go to the abstract. I'm asking them to find pressure and timing and flow and tension and, and application and creativity. And when I can communicate with them about that while they're swimming, we're, we're, I'm not dropping a sentence or four minutes of talking and then encouraging them for 20 minutes and then four minutes of talking, they are being educated and connected with and paid attention to, and they know it the whole time. They have my attention the whole time. When college coaches come to visit, I let them know that I'm not actually available to talk to them during practice. They can, I can have somebody else on deck to talk to them about the program but I'm not available to talk to them because I'm busy talking to my athletes. So they, they know that, that we're, we're up to something the whole time and they know exactly what my intention is. Um, it's, it's planned out. And, and we talk about that during the warm up. So during the warm up, I don't give an 800 uh, swim kit puller or what have you, they get in with their snorkels and I talk to them about what it is that we're doing today and why we're doing that and what the learning is, uh, is aimed at. And, and also the long-term, you know, sometimes I'll read them a page of, of, uh, of Angela Duckworth or, or Brene Brown or, or what have you, you know, it, it, it opens the conversation for not only the relationship, but the learning through the values. It, it, it sets the tone, it sets the culture. I don't know how I, I went to a national team camp um in 2018 and I said to the head coach I said hey this is kind of how I coach now and so I'd like to be able to use these during my small group practices and he said sounds good so we had the the large group practice and uh, we all had our two lanes and we gave the warm-up and they got in and I put my hands in my pocket for 15 minutes and that was when the coaches went to get coffee or talk to each other, went, you know, hung out and kind of got organized. And it just kind of brought me back to my time before the headsets when 
they got in and I just, I, and I felt alone, but when my kids get in, like, that's when the conversation starts. And I, I really like that. You dropped that. I, first of all, I love that. That's an interesting story. What an unusual experience. Um, and the fact that you're standing there and you're, and you're, I, I, there's so much to unpack there. I, 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 I can't imagine. I had such great coaches. I can't imagine getting in and warming up. And part of my warm up is okay, guys, flow. This is what, you know, as I'm warming up, this is what you're going to do today. Um, that can, that would be that. I mean, you're not just warming up your body. You're, you're, you're laying down the neural pathways for what's going to happen. Okay. This, this it's set setting, getting you going. I love that you read, read Brene Brown, you know, Brene Brown, this is a famous author. Um, she was already, a, people don't know this. She sold millions of books before she ever did that one Ted talk about empathy and, uh, and, and how, and, and the power of empathy, but uh, she swam. Did you know that? Did you know she was a swimmer? Uh, yes. And her daughter swims. Okay. Yeah. It's well, what a great place to learn about vulnerability and, and what it takes on the emotional spectrum to go full scent. You know, if you, if you aren't able, able to handle these emotions, you, you're not open to these emotions. And if I'm going to, if I'm afraid that this is going to hurt too much, then I'm not then I'm going to hold something in my pocket and I'm not going to go full send because I'm afraid of what that's going to feel like. If I'm disappointed, if I know I can handle it, I'm just, I'm going to try and something's going to happen. But I mean, I think, I think swimming and Brene Brown just fit like a hand in a glove because it it's vulnerable. It's real. It's hard. You can't, you can't escape it. So I'm a, I'm a big Brene fan. Um, you, you sort of answered this question, but I, I still think there's, there's more to mine here. How did the, how did Triton wear change your training program? Oh, so back to my, my background in measurement psychometrics, um, there are certain metrics that are more powerful and have more leverage than other metrics. So we have limited resources in terms of the time with our athletes. Like I'm, I'm packing that time with my athletes. I only have two hours with them and I feel like I have a lot to do. So I don't, I don't want to drive a low leverage. I don't want to invest in a stock that's going to give me a half a percent return every year. I want to invest in a stock that's going to give me five, six, 10, 15% return. So in choosing something to invest in, I want to know what that return is. Well, when Triton Wear has so many metrics, so many things that I can measure, and I can decide looking at my team that I, I need to level up in this area. And that's the thing that's going to give us the most, uh, the, the steepest slope of, of improvement. And so I can choose that and I can plan my season around it. And I mean, one of the things about Triton Wear is that I, I think it enhances the art side of coaching because it takes away some of the things that get in our way of connecting with our swimmers. Like I'm not out there with my stopwatch all the time. I know everybody's times. Um, I I'm not counting strokes. It's counting strokes, but there are things that I would never have access to that Triton where gives me access to that provide huge levels of improvement that I can communicate with now. So we, we did a set the other day where we were looking, so it was long course and this is new and our kids in Oregon have, not done a lot of long course in the past two years. So we were measuring the stroke rate at the beginning and the stroke rate at the end and comparing those knowing that in long course, it's a little intimidating. So I might set a lower rate than I would have short course. And I'm probably going to drop off that rate throughout the course of the length. So, Hey, here's long course. Let's not be intimidated by it. Let's learn where our strengths and weaknesses are. And when we did that set 20 minutes later, not only did the kids start at a higher rate team wide, they started at a higher rate, but they dropped off less. And that was, that it was 25 minutes. It's not, I don't think I could have accomplished that learning over any period of time without the Triton wear, but with the Triton wear and being able to tell them real time again, with the headsets, they know what they're doing right there. That 1.2, that 1.5, that 1.8, I'm doing it right now. So, so I can internalize what that feels like. And then when you tell me that I increased my rate to 1.8, I can, 
we, or we can unpack the difference between that. And so now when I go on my last one of a descending set, I know what I'm searching for in terms of my feeling because I validated that feeling when they were having it, when there was actual success. So the, the learning is so rich because we have access to things that I would, I would, I would never be able to get a team's stroke rate at the beginning and the end. I got 30 kids in the water and that practice, I had 60 kids in the water, but I had everybody's and I was able to communicate it. And then the, the chart, it, just watching the chart evolve, it went like this and they know they're better and they understand why. And that was 20, 25 minutes on a Saturday morning. Like that's pretty powerful. It's, it's something it's, it's a, it's a dialogue and an understanding between a coach and an athlete that oftentimes takes years to, it, this is what this feels like. And this is that, I think that that feel is, is the right body position. And this is what we're looking for. And yeah, it's uh it's sort of like a blind giant reaching around. It, there's a lot of feel. A lot of coaches are great at this. They're intuitive at it. But um, well, a lot of I, swimmers too. So it's just, it's like a musician with like perfect pitch. Like you had pretty perfect pitch when it came to the sensations of the water, and you're going to have some of those people. But what about access to the sport for people that don't? What about normal people in the middle of the bell curve? I mean, if you truly believe in a growth mindset, then you, you really want access to people that aren't coming in with perfect pitch when it comes to the sensory feel of the water. It, and you want to be able to help them find those notes and find the rhythm and find the tension flow. And when you're able to say yes, definitively, they know it, you know it. And they're able to internalize that with a certain sensation. They look, they start to look talented. And that, I mean, that's, that's, that's the talent code 101 is if if, you can develop you, pathways. You can myelinate, but you, but it has to be conscious. If, if, if you're a swimmer or your coach or your swim parent out there, um, the, you know, this, this, the, the secret of the sport is that and when you're an age grouper, if you, if you keep doing it, you win by attrition. Uh, there, there are so many athletes who are, let's be honest, they're for, for years and years and years, you're like, this is an average athlete. They're on the team. And isn't that nice? And they're working so hard and it's the experience and what swimming gives back to you, but it's that mid-level athlete that stays there and people start, people peel off because it's challenging. And then that, that mid-level average athlete becomes the, the, the important athlete, the, the athlete that, that's going to swim with uh, some scholarship money at, you know, D1, D2, D3. And what I'm hearing from you is that this technology can get that mid-level athlete to that level faster. Yeah. And that's, that's, I think what I find so rewarding is that, you know, talented athletes are going to randomly, it's like playing cards. At some point you're going to get an ACE. Okay but how do I play cards? Like with all the randomness of the hands that you, I mean, I'm in club coaching because I'm on college coaching. I, I don't, I don't get to kind of try to find the cards that I, that I like. I have, I have who grew up here and who goes to school here within a 15 mile radius. So if my bell curve is the same as somebody else's bell curve, the, the thing that I find my competitive itch gets scratched in coaching is that I can move my bell curve faster than you can move your bell curve. I, I can make mine skewed this way and, and I can skew it pretty hard because I can teach people with enough sense and with enough access to the water, how to do it like this instead of like this. So I find a, a lot of satisfaction in taking, um, you know, somebody ranked a thousandth as a 12 year old to maybe 500 as a 14 year old to maybe 200 to maybe a hundredth in the country. I, to me, that's like jumping the queue. It's like cutting in line, you know, is it, I think in coaching it fundamentally coaching success comes down to how steep the improvement curve for your kids are. How, how fast can you get them to actually learn? It's a learning race. 
for them, it's a physical race, physical, mental, emotional. But for us, when I compete against another coach, it's, it's how fast I can get them to learn. So my, actually my coaching hero is Jaime Escalante. Do you know who that is? I do. I, yeah. I know the name. I know the name. Yeah. So, um, stand and deliver. He was a math teacher in South central LA and he took the remedial class and he got him to pass the AP calculus exam. And that, that gives me chills. That's it to me. That's it. I want, I want to be Jaime Escalante. I want to take someone that wasn't into it and didn't know why they should be into it. And I want to show them the possibilities and I want to get them to engage to the point that the learning is internalized, that it matters, that it's exciting for them. And when it's exciting for them, the learning, then the outcomes will be exciting to them. But it's the learning that, and I mean, he got those kids to, he got people in South Central LA who were in the remedial mass class to start showing up early and staying late and, and, and signing up for the test. Just merely them finding the confidence to take a chance. And to me, like that's the, that's the swan song, the, the siren song of, um, of coaching is that. Let's, let's, let's bring it back to Triton Ware and just uh, bring it back to our topic. What, how, why was Triton Ware the right choice to complement your headsets? Because I knew how powerful it could be in terms of what it could show me and how it could teach them. So I, I was interested in, in Triton Wear way back when it came out. I, th I thought it was neat, but I never really sat down and thought about what I could do with it. And so when I got a chance to try it, it, it opened up a, a, a completely different world of coaching because now kids have access to important aspects. You know, I, I, was, I, I was thinking the other day how we used to just do two metrics, your times and your volume. Those are interesting metrics, that those are good things. But the conversation now is so broad. The conversation can be about getting better in so many different ways. And through Triton Rare, we have access to deeper conversations, broader conversations. And again, as a coach, it's taking some of the, the busy work off of me, the, the getting of splits and the, the counting of strokes and the things that I, I, I could do, but it would take time away from connecting and communicating. It's freeing up my time to, to teach and connect and learn and try and wear changes the conversation that I'm having with my athletes. It changes my planning. So when I plan a set now, I'm thinking about what I want to get better in, which I was thinking about, but it was very cloudy. I hope I'm getting better in this. I'm not sure if I'm going to know until I look at it in a race and dissect it for that component. But now I know, I know that 20 minutes later, the learning happened and sometimes the outcome happened. And when we do a set that's progressive, so this week it looks like this, and next week we're going to level up, and next week we're going to level up, the Triton Wear allows me to see actual progress in their metrics compared over a similar, a similar set. Um, it allows me to compete with swimmers that are, you know, a thousand miles away, and their coach uses a Triton Wear, and those kids are similar level, and now we can have a deeper relationship with competing in our sets rather than just, uh, you know, we hold, we held 59s and, and he held 58s. Okay. Yes. But what are the cool things that you're working on? What are the, the inputs that produce those outputs? So if, if the time is an output metric, it's a, a, a culminative metric, then what are the things that I'm going to drive that improvement with? And then you go back to, to playing with metrics which I think is fun. I'm, I'm, I'm going to drop a stroke and um, I'm going to increase my underwater dolphin kick speed. I remember Bob Bowman talking about a set he did with Michael Phelps where it was a bunch of fifties and it was a certain number of strokes at a certain time. And that was a set that they repeated quite a bit to get him ready for the tuner fly. 
And I remember being uh, envious of being able to track those metrics. I wish I could count the strokes for all my kids in the water. And I wish I could match that to the times that they do, because that sounds really cool. So I can do that now, but I'm not counting the strokes Trigmar is. And I've got it for all the kids in the pool. So it's not about having that one unicorn in a small group setting where, you know, I can, I can only pay attention that deeply to five to seven people. Well, now again, like moving the average, people who would never have access to the resources that someone like Michael Phelps had access to, you know, he would go to the Olympic training center and they would, they would run all these tests. Why? Because they wanted access to the metrics. And now the kids with the Triton wears, they, they, they're not going to be flown to the Olympic training center, but they have access to all the learning that the training center would give. And so it's giving all the perks that you would have to earn through your intuition. It's giving that access and that learning and those opportunities to people before they develop that intuition. It, it's not only steepening the curve, it's leveling the start, it's leveling up the starting point. So now I understand how to develop talent. And that's, again, I, I think, I think we're, we're changing the sport here because we're giving access to the learning that a very small percentage of people get. And we're, we're broadening that access. And, and it, it's like, it's like we're, 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 we're giving the reading material to more people than just the people that can translate Latin, you know? And I think that's pretty cool. I was going to ask you, how, how, is, how does Tritonware going to change the sport? How is this, this powerful technology going to change the sport? And I think you crystallized it right there. Yeah, when you go to the Olympic Training Center, you have all of this powerful data, all of this feedback, and it's this unique moment. And it was always one, two, or three weeks out of your life once a year. If you were an elite athlete representing Team USA, Tritonware offers more than that. Tritonware, Tritonware has the, you have so much, the data is so deep with Tritonware, you're, get, you're getting, you're getting more metrics. And I think sometimes, so maybe the question is, you know, if you, if you, if you open this up, um, I mean, I think the reality is you're going to pick and choose the, the metrics that, that matter to you and get comfortable with that. How, how would you, you know, how, what would you say to a coach that is a little bit resistant to technology and they get Tritonware and they have this panel of it? all these options, what would you tell them? What would you say? Start here first. Yeah. Well, I'd say go with, at first I'd say, go with, go with your intuition. I mean, as coaches, we are highly intuitive on the feedback that we're seeing physically from our athletes. So we are watching their flow. We are, you know, where to go, you know, what you're working on already. I would say play, play with the information that you're getting um, I would say, go towards the improvement that you want and, and play with, with one or two metrics, play with one thing and watch it change. Watch your athletes change when you have a conversation that's grounded in data. It, it's powerful. It's a powerful conversation. I think something people think of the Triton where is uh, um, like, you do have, you, you have to be a statistics major and, and you have to be, you know, super, uh, super nerdy. I think the Triton wear allows your creativity to come out because it's doing things. My brain can, yeah, I majored in math. Can my brain do what Triton wear is doing on the back end with all of its data? No. So I'm not doing that. I appreciate that it is doing that. I understand how powerful that is, but it's actually allowing me to be more creative. So I, I, I think a lot of people think Triton wear is, is for the the, the, uh, the nerdy coaches, the, the ones that were with their stopwatch the whole time and, and tracking that stuff already. I think it opens doors of creativity because it's not just about a stopwatch anymore. It's about all the components that, that flow together and create what it is that you were already working towards. It's just helping you do that more effectively and at a faster rate. So for the people that are, that are thinking, oh, you know, that's going to be a lot of work. Tritonware is going to be a lot. No, Tritonware does almost everything for you. If you know where to click and you just play with it for 10 minutes, it's showing you things that would take 10 months for you to figure out. 
and, and probably wouldn't be interested in, in doing all that stuff. But it brings it to you so you can spend your time thinking about what you want to do with it, not what it is that's going on in there. And that's that's kind of the irony of Twitemer is I, I think it creates a more artistic coach. I think it confirms your intuition. And, and honestly, in, in some ways, it helps you learn to be a better coach because sometimes your intuition isn't as good as you thought it was. And sometimes your program isn't as good as you thought it was. So if you are a growth mindset coach and you are having a good time getting better and that's that's how you have fun in the sport is what does a better coach look like for you what does you being a better coach look like and this frees up space for you to move into that area yourself and so i think the thing that we're asking our athletes to do is to find a place to get better and find a path through that this tool helps us as coaches get better it frees up space for us to get better and it helps us find a path to get better. And I think that's really cool. I'm all about learning. I'm all about growth. And, and I'm all about finding those gaps and then playing with how to fill it. What does it look like? I don't know. I'm going to try it next season. Okay, well, I'm having a really good time with that. If you're listening to this pod and you are curious, go to tritonware.com. If you're on Instagram, go to at tritonware tech at Triton Wear Tech on Instagram, pick them up on IG, and also Triton Wear on Facebook and Twitter. I'm not sure. I think everybody's moving to Instagram. And if you're if you're really into this and you're like, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna make the move today. I've got to I've got to react to this. Get your discount. Go to mostswimtech.com forward slash discount forward slash gold medal mail. Use the coupon code gold medal mail for 15% off your entire order that expires June 30th. Megan, I think, yeah, I mean, you're in the process of this. You're, you're being creative now. Uh, I've been in meetings with you and you're, and, and you're, you're, you're gushing about, wow, I just found this out. This is cool. This is how I'm using it. So the question is, would you come back on and can we talk when you have these aha moments? You're like, I got to share this. I would love that. It's such an exciting topic. Yes, please. Um, are you going to, to U.S. international team trials? I'm super excited for that. I think getting everybody back on track with their goals, getting that elite level, I think that's exciting for our sport. So I'm, just, I'm, I'm ready to see people go fast and, and, and us stepping back out onto that world scene. That's, that's something I feel like we've kind of been missing for a little bit, especially for the junior teamers. They haven't had an opportunity in a long time. And I think we've been missing development over the past two years and that's near and dear to my heart. So I'm excited to see the little ones go too. Looking forward to seeing you there. See you there. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcasts on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.